Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. Now, since last episode, there hasn't been a whole lot of time. I'm picking back up shortly after because I want to get this stuff set up. Um, I did make some recipes. I went ahead and we have this filled out with different plates. Gold, nickel, bronze, steel, copper, aluminum, lead, tin, and iron. I'm skipping some plates because they just don't have a whole lot of use. Like, they're really just not necessary. Like, you use them, like, once or twice, and so we could do that in the manual machine. I set up another metal former. This one's making bronze item casings, tin item casings, and iron item casings. Um, and then I have dense lead plates, dense iron, dense tin, the compressor. And then in the other metal formers that's making cables, I have copper cable and tin cable so far. Nothing in the macerator or electric furnace yet. And then, in addition, I went ahead and added a bunch of recipes for blocks and buttons and uh, chests and energy storage upgrades and toolboxes and coils and acceleration cards and advanced cards and <laughs> just different things that I wanted to be able to make. Block of nickel. Uh, so anyways, today we're going to be picking back up and we are going to be working towards our universal cables because I think I mentioned this before, but there's three major major, major benefits for the rest of the pack that stem from starting with IC2. I've been really kind of focusing down that IC2 because we spent a lot of time on IC2. And those three things, one of them, of course, is UU matter, which we've already got going. We've already, we're already reaping the rewards of UU, so to speak. I um, mean, it's wonderful. <laughs> the other two things we're going to be doing today, the first being just super fast machines. And the, uh, and the third thing being just really awesome power generation. Um, with the four times multiplier for this pack. Um, so the universal cables. Um, electrical steel. I've actually got this. I, I had this at the beginning before last episode. Um, this alloy furnace over here. I have this making electrical steel. That's just steel and silicon thrown in there. And that's all it takes. Both of which we have automated. So that's not a concern. But this redstone iron wiring. We've got this. We did that last episode. But the basic coils. We need aluminum wire. Impregnated sticks. An Inori crystal. So we're going to start with the Inori crystal. Well, technically we got to start with the impregnated sticks, I guess. Because we're going to have to get a carpenter and a squeezer to make seed oil. Well, actually we can do it in the mechanical squeezer or the regular squeezer. But uh, no, we're going to go straight for the squeezer um, from forestry. And this takes sturdy casings. And I can't remember, we weren't... Did we ever make sturdy casings? Like, I know we've got hardened casings in replication. I don't know. Okay, I guess not. We've actually made a carpenter because it's right there, but we're, we got to make another one um, for our uses because I don't, I don't want to take that carpenter. That's for overclockers. So the sturdy casing requires bronze and copper gears. And the, the squeezer takes it as well. The thermionic fabricator takes hardened casing. Okay. Um, but I am going to need some gold gears, so let me, and the, uh, the squeezer need a gear, right? Ten gears. Okay, so let me get, like, a little bit of copper, a little bit of tin, and a little bit of gold. And I'm just going to go ahead and make up some gears. Which we're going to be connecting, I'm going to connect all this stuff up to the AE system uh, here soon as well, but... Let's go ahead and just dump that into there. Okay, so there's our gears. Let's pop back over here. And I've got bronze made up. Down here. I'll go ahead and just grab that. And we are going to be getting into power. I'm doing the AE2 stuff, a little bit of this first. The reason being is um, we're actually going to need it. Oh, it's bronze gears on the bottom, not copper. But the method that we want to use to make power is nuclear craft. Nuclear craft is very expensive and resource and recipe intensive to get it started. So I want to get AE2 in place and all the basic stuff because we're going to need plates. We're going to, you know, we're going to need to make lead plates and stuff like that when it comes to making the nuclear craft stuff. So getting the IC2 stuff and getting a lot of basic AE2 stuff and item storage and stuff like that in place is going to really help us when we go into nuclear craft. And I can get by with an RGG, possibly two, 
um, as the system kind of expands a little bit, but we'll be okay uh, to do that. Okay, so bronze gears, there's four sturdy casings, and we're going to try to scan that here in just a, in just a second, because I can't remember if we did try to scan it or not. Probably, if I already made a carpenter, but I'm not for sure. Alright, so there's a carpenter, and then we're going to want a squeezer, and we will be finishing up some quests, or doing some quests today as well. There's the squeezer. And quest complete squeezer. Speak of the devil. Um, we'll go ahead and grab our loot chest. And then they want us to make an impregnated casing and thermionic fabricator. We're going to need that today. And let's see, what do we get out of our loot chest? 64 light gray concrete powder. Okay, that's not really a great reward. And uh, let's see, carpenter squeezer. We're also going to want a... Uh, thermionic fabricator and to do this we're gonna well we're gonna have to make an impregnated casing so we need to set this up first okay and let me grab some seeds as well I'm just gonna grab just standard seeds that's fine uh, we just need this for a minute we will be setting this up in a permanent place but I'm, I'm kind of waiting to do any kind of like permanent placement or AE2 connection for much RF based stuff until we actually get our RF system set up so we're gonna put our squeezer right here and we're going to go ahead and drop our seeds in there. It's going to start crushing those down and creating seed oil. There we go. And then we're going to set up a carpenter right here. And we're going to attach a, just a fluid conduit. It's fine for right now. I don't like using a lot of these, but just one will be fine. And then we're going to send our seed oil into our carpenter. And then um, we're going to need a bunch of wood. Because we need to make impregnated casings. Um, which are 250 millibuckets a piece, and then impregnated sticks as well, which are another 100 millibuckets a piece. Um, really, I think I only needed like one impregnated casing at the moment, and that's just for the thermionic fabricator. So let's just grab like a half stack of wood, and let's go ahead and lay this out for the impregnated casing. We've almost got enough seed oil. Let me grab some more seeds. I'm going to go ahead and toss some more seeds in here because we're going to need a bit of this seed oil. There we go. That's got enough seed oil and it's crafting our impregnated casing. We're about to have a server restart. Okay, there's our impregnated casing. We'll go ahead and grab that. And then let's clear this recipe out. <clears throat> and we're going to teach it to make impregnated sticks now. So it's going to start running. It's going to start making those for us. And quest completed impregnated casing. Let's go ahead and take that. There we go. And we got another ender pouch. Okay. Well, we've already got one of those, so. But maybe I'll want a, a second color or something like that. I might do, uh, I might put tools into an ender pouch. We'll see. Or maybe building supplies or something. Okay, and then the thermionic fabricator. To make this, we should have everything. There we go. There is that. And quest complete. Thermionic fabricator. And we'll go ahead and take a loot chest. And let's see what we got. We got eight Plowman's Lunch. Like, I'm getting rare rewards. They're just not... <laughs> they're just not all that useful most of the time. Okay, so now that we've got the Thermionic Fabricator and we've got the impregnated sticks running to make our universal cables. Like, we've got this. That we can make. Let me actually just go ahead and make some of that. So we'll just toss some aluminum in there and let that run and make our aluminum cables for us. And then, now we need the stuff to make the Inori Crystal, which is actually pretty easy, but we are going to have to make the Atomic Reconstructor. And this requires steel plates, not a problem, golden electron tubes, that's where we need the Thermionic Fabricator. Red laser lens is just like that. But then we need iron casings, which take iron sheet metal hardened casing and 10 electron tubes. And these require 10... Uh, and redstone. Okay. So let's go ahead and get ourselves like five pieces of that and two pieces of that. We're also going, actually, let me get four pieces of that. And then we're going to need some glass. And it was, uh, whoops, no matter. Um, atomic. Was it golden electron tubes? Yeah, we need golden electron tubes, which is gold. And let's see, we'll pop down here. I'm just going to steal the Spectre Coil for a minute. That'll be fine. 
And I guess since I'm using a Spectre Coil, I don't really need the lever. Um, in truth. So we'll just put this down right there. And we're going to tell it how to make 10 electron tubes. And we're going to toss in a couple pieces of glass. I actually think we only need one piece of glass, in fact. And we're going to wait for this thing to heat up. And it's going to melt down the glass. And then it's going to create our 10 electron tubes. There we go. And then we're going to replace this with gold. And make ourselves some gold electron tubes. Okay. So there's that. And, oh yeah, the impregnated sticks. While we're down here, let's go ahead and grab those. There's 24 of those, which will be plenty. And then back over to here. And let's go ahead now and craft our atomic reconstructor. So the iron casing, there's how you make that. And quest complete the gate for actually additions. Aha. Okay. Let's go. And we did complete this, but we have to uh, do the circuit board quest first. Um, which we will get into that, but... Um, because we're going to use it for upgrades, but not right this second. Okay, the iron casing can be scanned. Aha! I thought so. I thought, like, most of the machine blocks, I know the RF tools ones, like, everything can be scanned. It's wonderful. Okay, so the atomic reconstructor, the red laser lens. Um, oh, I'm going to need glass panes. No? Oh, it has to be a red one, doesn't it? That's fine. I've got that down at this farm. And we are going to be plugging this up to the system, and I've got to replug up all of this stuff. And then we're going to need... Uh, We've got everything. So there's our atomic. Um, well, actually, let me open this up. And I forgot we completed. Um, oh, yeah, gates. That gate right there. We get to choose between two iron casings. That's useless. Two advanced machine casings. Also useless. Two heavy engineering blocks. I guess we'll take the heavy engineering blocks. And then the, let's see. Actually, additions quest line. We'll go ahead. <clears throat> and, of course, we get a book. Um. We'll go ahead and detect it, and there we go. And we have begun the actual additions quest line. Okay, and then we're going to craft our atomic reconstructor. There's that. Quest complete, and we'll get a loot chest. And then, let's see, I think, uh, yeah, I've completed worms. It says they die after 10,000 ticks in this pack. Let's go ahead and grab that loot chest. That just, they come from... Uh, uh, hoeing ground and then ball of fur we've done that um, those just dropped from cats so you can get those from any any cats so um, okay so that's all done awesome all right we got three loot chests let's see what we got we got uh, Fosic resonator 16 lily pads and a heavy plate shield all right now I'm gonna order a button and I also want a Let's see, a button. Let's get some iron, like a half stack. Let's get um, a redstone torch. And that should be everything that we need. And then let's just pop down here. And once again, we are going to automate this. It's very, very easy to automate. We're going to automate it once we get RF power, like legit. Let's take our redstone torch. Let's right click. We're going to set it to Pulse. We're going to take our Spectra Coil and put it on there. And that's going to start building it up with power. Um, Inori Crystals take... Let's see. I know Empowered Inori takes 100,000 RF, but Inori Crystals take 80 CF. Okay. Crystal Flux. So we'll go ahead and just toss that down. We should have plenty. And I forgot the button. We'll go ahead and just right-click that and power. There we go. We got 32 Inori. And quest complete Inori. And now we can start thermal expansion. <laughs> We're not going to, but we could. And then single batteries, crushers, and powers. We've actually got probably all these quests completed right here because of exploration. Okay, so now that we've got that, 
the universal cable. The redstone iron wiring, the basic coils. Oh yeah, I need to go grab the aluminum wire. And there we go. There's eight of those. And then we can craft the redstone, or the, uh, I need, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and get these. And then again, oh, they don't actually use them. I don't know if that's a bug or what. It doesn't actually consume the wires. So it's like you're wiring from nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue. Okay. Well, anyways, we can take that. We can take the electrical steel and pow. Basic universal cables. And then what we're going to do is I've actually got uh, right here enriched alloy. And right inside of the metallurgic infuser, I've got reinforced alloy. I was crafting that, um, which this is just iron and redstone. We crafted this before. Diamond dust with uh, enriched alloy makes reinforced. And then there's, um, after that, we need uh, refined obsidian from doing obsidian with, uh, like crushed obsidian with diamond dust. So I'm going to make a little bit of that real quick. There we go. We'll get that running. And then what we can do is we can take our basic universal cables, place them like that, around enriched alloy, and we get advanced universal cables. And then we can take and put these around the reinforced and get elite universal cables. Okay, and then we got to wait on this stuff. And then i got to upgrade it. But if we take a look in here, we should have, um, under the mechanism quest line, this quest right here for enriched alloy, we've done that. So we'll go ahead and just take a loot chest. Reinforced alloy, there we go, we'll take a loot chest, and then we're about to get uh, atomic alloy, pulverized obsidian, technically we've done that, we've done that, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and just pull some of these upgrades out of here, <clears throat> and just shift right click to install, okay, that's a little bit better. <laughs> Okay, there we go. There's our 10 refined obsidian dust. We'll toss that into there, and we're going to upgrade our reinforced alloy. Can I throw another one in there? Maybe another one? Ah. Okay, an atomic alloy. That's going to complete another quest. Um, oh, we need compressed obsidian before we can actually do the quest, though. Okay. Well, anyways, we can now upgrade our cables one more time to the ultimate universal cable. Um, we don't necessarily need the ultimate in truth for what we're doing, but uh, but we might. Like, as I, as I expand on it, we might need it, so. Okay, so now that we've got that, um, we're gonna need our uh, configurator. This came from the, basically the starting mechanism quest. So we're gonna grab that. And we also got these loot chests. Let's go ahead and open these things. First up, we got 16 EFLNs, which are kind of fun. They're basically big explosives that you can throw. And then we got eight BLTs. Neither of which are terribly useful to us, but that's fine. And then we're going to go ahead and order uh, RTGs. We're going to go ahead and order 18 of these. And it's I can't order I can't order 18. <laughs> I can order probably like, uh, we'll order six. Okay, there's six RTGs. Let's go ahead and order like six more. And if we go up here, we should say, see, see it's taking the iron, it's cutting down for us. Okay, now the fun begins. Let's, uh, well, actually I need to wait till this is done before I do that. Well, actually I could go ahead and do it though. Yeah, let's just pull this stuff up. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to run Ultimate Universal Cables. Right there. Right there. Bring it across. Bring it over. And then we're going to plug these up right in there. And let's go ahead and take our configurator. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, no, not right click. We're going to shift right click. And we're going to set it to pull. And then... Right up here, pull, 
pull, pull, and pull. Okay, so all of these are pulling energy. And the thing is, like normally, with, with just IC2, like I said, normally these things are capped at 32 EU per tick. That's what they produce with six RTGs. But in this pack, it's four times energy production. Um, so these can produce up to, like it's four times on the base. And then basically every time you add an RTG, it doubles the power generation. So these things will produce a whopping 256 EU per tick. So if you were to transfer this and change it over with mechanism to RF power, you'd be getting almost 1,100 RF per tick per radioisotope thermoelectric generator. And with a good IC2 setup, these things are basically free. I mean, you have tons of plutonium coming in. And then once you get this stuff automated, I mean, it's, it's free. It's absolutely free. So let's go ahead and grab those. And what we're going to do now is bump these up to six RTGs. And these universal cables are going to build up on power. Um, actually, it's probably not going to take all that long. And you can see these universal cables can store two million RF. So let's go ahead and grab some overclockers. And let's do, say, 10 overclockers. 12, 13, 14. I mean, we can make plates insanely fast at this point. <laughs> and let's take a look at our RTGs here. Okay, that's too big. Let's order three more. And let's see if I can get upstairs before the block cutting machine finishes. Pew, pew. Let's toss another one in there. Maybe another one. Now we make plates instantly. As fast as this can send blocks in here, like as fast as it's crafting those blocks... It's making those plates before it gets another. And all it's got to do is compress the iron. And the funny thing is, the block cutting machine is the most expensive machine to run up here. We're having no issues whatsoever running it. And the universal cables are already filled up. Each of these is storing 2 million and with like 6, not even, actually it was only 3 RTGs when I came up here. And then I've just been adding them. Only 3 RTGs were filled out and it filled those universal cables like it was nothing. Because this right here is about 6,600 RF per tick. Um, whenever I fill out this last one, which I'm about to do. If you were to convert this to um, to RF. Now, we're still going to do nuclear craft, but we could easily do just thermoelectric and be good. Because, I mean, these things... I'm producing plutonium like it's going out of style. I could add more reactors if I want more plutonium. Our uranium uh, cells are free, you know. And... These things are just crazy, crazy powerful. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go through and add, like, uh, for example, the electric furnace. I'm going to be using the electric furnace instead of the induction furnace because it actually gets faster. Um, it's just basically with IC2, you have the electric furnace, which is like your tier one. Then you have the induction furnace, which is like your tier two. But, you know, it doesn't accept overclockers. It doesn't accept transformer upgrades it's it's locked to a tier 2 power but then you take the electric furnace and you overclock it to the point that it's so fast that it beats out the induction furnace like it smelts instantly and that's kind of like your top tier furnace we'll go ahead and throw in some in the macerator i think the compressor needs some i'm going to go with 16 for now and we'll just see how well everything runs and then i need more overclockers i have used all the overclockers and I can't remember if I already pulled the 20 out of here that we're done. No, I didn't. Okay, let me grab those. And we'll toss those into there. <laughs> it can't even pull the stuff out fast enough. So, I actually wonder. This is something I've never tried. Let me grab some more ejector upgrades. And let me grab more cobblestone. If I was to put additional ejector upgrades, would it output faster? Yes, it does. Awesome. Okay. Let's do another overclocker. Oh, man. Another one. <laughs> that is fast. Like, like, that's faster than a Supremium Furnace, right? Like, the Super Furnaces from Mystical Agriculture have nothing on Super IC2 Furnaces. 
Let's grab a couple more stacks of cobble. And let's bump this up to 20 overclockers. There we go. <laughs> what about 21 overclockers? Oh man, it's getting faster. I mean, I'm starting to hit like diminishing returns. So, uh, But I mean, with RTGs, it's, it's free power. It's infinite free power. Let's toss that in there. Oh my gosh. It takes like a third of a second to smelt a stack of cobblestone. Ooh, did you see that? Like it took the power. Yeah, I think we're going to go with like maybe 23 overclockers. I need more RTGs though. But luckily that's easily remedied because we can just order. Um, well, I'm only going to be able to order these three at a time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> When you can smelt, like, honestly, I don't need, like, you know, normally in packs, I'll I'll set up multiple furnaces, like, um, you know, even Supremium furnaces, they smelt really fast. But I'll set up multiples because I have, like, a lot of processing stuff going on. Um, electric furnace, one of those will smelt everything. Like, honestly, in this pack, I mean, I know Mechanism has, like, five times ore processing, and Ender IO can do, like, three times ore processing. But in this pack, we're actually going to be moving into a Void Miner here soon because we can actually, with IC2, we can cut some corners and get that early. Like, really early. Like, I could have gotten it back when we first started Mechanism. I could have gotten it. Like, it's super easy. Um, we are going to be using that. And I don't feel like getting, you know, in modded Minecraft, it, it would be different if it's, like, fairly vanilla Minecraft. But in modded Minecraft... You, you have Void Miners, and especially with environmental tech, it's such fast resource gen that honestly max productivity from a metal is not important at all. And mechanism is laggy as can be. Like I'm trying, I'm going to try to avoid using as much mechanism as possible just because it kills server performance. Like whenever I'm, whenever I'm looking at like the server stats and I'm, I'm profiling it and using lag goggles and stuff, Mechanism's always top, and I know it's bad on performance. And the five times ore processing systems and elite factories and stuff like that, they're just bad on performance. Like, straight up just awful. And I mean, when resources are basically free in mass, there's not a whole lot of point in worrying about more than double times. In truth. I mean, you might as well just double it and be done with it, I think. But <laughs> that's just me, but... Okay, so Radioisotope, I actually had one of these left over, so I don't have to order one. Um... And let me see about... I need to upgrade my crafting because I can't just keep making three RTGs at a time. So let's see about... Uh, I don't think I can make a 16K just from scratch like this, but... I can. It's 831 bytes. Okay, I'm going to order a 16K storage component. And it's got to craft a few things here, but it's actually not going to take all that long. Let's go ahead and set up another one of these RTGs. And this should be able to run, I think it should be able to run our furnace now. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, I'm going to need more overclockers though. Like in a bad sort of way. Let's throw three of those in there. I need more ejector upgrades too. I don't know if, um, I wonder if two would be able to output and keep up with like instantaneous processing. <laughs> let's grab it's it's a little bit of a concern when you're when you're worried that like that fast of item output might not be enough no that's not gonna be enough what about three three can keep up <laughs> gosh it just eats it it just eats it uh let's try 24 24 is kind of killing my power. Just a little bit. I think I'm going to stick with 23. I think that's fast enough. Um, on our... Yeah, I think it, I think it's just fast enough. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it at 4 ejector upgrades because it, it is instantaneous output. Okay, there's that. And our 16K. Um, let me go ahead and automate... I want to teach it how to make uh, crafting units. So there's that. And then I want to teach it how to make 16K crafting units. I think most of our systems are going to be 16K. 64K tends to be a little bit overkill. Unless you're just ordering like 
ridiculous amounts of stuff. So let's go ahead and just order one of these. No crafting. Oh, it's is it... Uh, okay, let me just order one of those. And I'll just manually craft it. That's fine. So I'm going to bump these up to four ejectors. So those four are done. <laughs> just wait till we get our block cutting machine overhauled. Like, honestly, we could just dump in, like, a stack of iron blocks and get, like, nine stacks of plates instantly. That's why I had no interest whatsoever in using the metal press, because we can make everything instant with IC2. Okay, so there is our 16K crafting storage. Goodbye, 1K. Hello, 16K. And that's going to get moved. It's not going to stay there. See, I promised that uh, all of our time spent in Icy Tube is going to be worth it, and today it's worth it. <laughs> we have superpower generation, and we have insanely fast. Like, I'm going to have to uh, put accelerator. Uh, well, actually, I could make. I've got to wait till these RGGs are done. Can I order like 30 of these? I have the resources. Let's do it. I will say, resources with AE2, I get very, very order happy. Resources will probably become an issue uh, here before too long, but that's okay. Like I tend to, whenever I have AE2, I tend to be like, well, I'll just order like a stack of this and a stack of this and a stack of this and stacks of everything. Stacks all around. So <laughs> it might it might become a little bit of an issue on resources, but that's okay. We actually ran out of power. <laughs> Because when this thing's auto-crafting, it doesn't get too happy about the RTG right there. Um, now, that is something that we can easily remedy, in fact. Um, and I'll show you how that is. Like, I've got to wait for these to get done. Which they really don't take very long. Because, by the way, I did make accelerators. These are all filled out with accelerators. Like, everything on this wall is. Okay, so there's 32 of those. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these into the molecular assemblers because it's going to speed up crafting time and then now if we order RTGs it should be a bit faster so let's order six of these and if we take a look here look at that I had to craft like 300 iron plates uh, it's still a little bit slow um, but that's going to get sped up once we get crafting co-processing units and we get uh, more molecular assemblers, which we'll get all that stuff in place next episode, and we're going to get item storage next episode. So, because right now we pretty much broke machines. Like, honestly, we won't need any other furnace except for electric furnace. In all of our automation, all we need is electric furnace. Then what we can do is we can just set up, like, this is temporary, of course. But we can just set up uh, radioisotope right there. Put that down. Put uh, configurator. Set it to pull power. There we go. That's going to keep that thing filled. Um, it's a bit better than the RTG. And I may even add a second one just to make sure. Yeah, let's make a second one. Like how much plutonium do I have? Uh, 1,358. Okay, we're still good for a little while. Like, honestly, RTGs, not all that useful. I mean, the Californian, Californium RTG was, like, very awesome for a while. Now it's not so awesome. Because <laughs> we, we have ourselves some IC2 RTGs, which are, like, legit with, uh, within this pack. Okay, so our ME controller is safe now. It's not going to run out of power anytime soon. These shouldn't run out of power. I need to make more overclockers. Which I do have, um, I mean, these are, this up here, this has been running for so long, it's totally backed up on um, distilled water. Like, it's 100% backed up on all of these. Let's see, the overclockers are just electronic circuits, which we can get from UU Matter. And then we need 10 plates and copper cables. So let's order, like, 210 plates. And watch the madness. Like, it's going to have to craft all the blocks, but, like, look at that. <laughs> we don't even see the thing run. It's just like, pew, 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 pew. I love it. I love it. 
I've been waiting for this moment for so long. Like something that we've been building up to, and now the insanity has begun. Alright, let me pop down to the IC2 area. And get that stuff running, making more overclockers. And let me set the replicator to make... Which we're going to have, we're going to be setting up a replicator station that just like replicates. And we're going to overclock replicators too. Like, <laughs> we are actually going to overclock these things so they run faster. But um, we're going to set up our replicators to keep so many of all the different machine blocks and electronic circuits and all the stuff that we want replicated. We're going to set those to keep everything replicated. Because, I mean, UU Matter, I've got a lot of UU Matter. And realistically, I can do the same thing with these RTGs, and I'm going to. So they'll be generating insane amounts of power, too. So, we're about to overhaul all of that. And honestly, this crusher, like, I mean, I know there's, like, crushing factories and all that that you can make. Not a whole lot of point in it at this point. <laughs> but for example if I threw something in the crusher this is a max speed crusher too like it's got max energy max speed if I threw in cobblestone look at that piddly speed now granted you can make a factory that's that speed times 7 that does 7 things at a time <clears throat> but guess what still going to be piddly speed <laughs> so we are going to um, I think let's see the uh, the Certus Quartz Dust we can make it a macerator right no okay let me say something here if i was to grab like certus because whatever i can put into the uh whatever i can put into the macerator i want to put in the macerator because there's just not a whole lot of point in the crusher if i can avoid it so nether quartz macerates Fluix does not macerate. Sardis does not macerate. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. But we're going to go ahead and take our nether quartz. So now if I ordered... Which I'm actually kind of low on quartz. But if I was to order, say... I'm going to go ahead and use the nether quartz. Because I'm going to have to get more anyway. So let's order 100 nether quartz dust. There we go. It's basically as fast as it can pump it in. AE2 is our limitation at this point. But anyway, some fun stuff there. Some very, very fun stuff. And then, we aren't going to get into nuclear craft next episode, but we can automate plating. Like basic plating, we can start automating this stuff. Um, like I need to set up a recipe for making graphite. Let's see, graphite, can you make that block by block? If so, I'm just going to cook it up like a block. No, you can't. There we go. There's a half stack. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which I want to say... Let me try something here. If I did... I think this would actually work. If I did a recipe that said... Uh, if you take... A half stack of coal, you get a half stack of graphite. Um, I may actually change the recipes to do larger amounts. Because I want to say that if we did this... Put it into there. And now if I was to order graphite, and I ordered, say, 200 of it. Yeah. It pumps out 32 at a time. So I'll tell you what, I might actually adjust the rest space to make, like, a stack at a time. And say, you know, if you want to make plates, you pump in 7 iron blocks and you get 63 iron plates. I might do that. Especially for like macerators and furnaces and stuff like that. I don't mind making a stack at a time. I don't. That's, well, I might actually wait. I might actually wait for right now until we get our auto materials coming in. And then I might set up the recipes like that. So, I think that's what we might do. Because that would be a lot faster if I just did a stack at a time. Or as close to a stack as possible. Because these machines will process a stack instantaneously. Whenever we're done. And they'll pump out a stack instantaneously. So just process everything a stack at a time. It would be really, really fast that way. So I think that's what we'll probably do. Um, anyways, I am going to end out this episode here because I know it's wrapping up point and I am very, very happy with our progress. We got good stuff. Very, very good stuff. <laughs> so uh, next episode, we are going to continue with AE2 for just a little bit. And then we're going to move into nuclear craft for our RF-based power. 
even though it's not necessarily needed because we could just do radioisotopes and be done with it. But we're still going to do nuclear craft because it's a fun mod and it gets overlooked a lot. It's not used in enough packs and I'm going to take this advantage to actually get to play with nuclear craft because I do quite love it. And there's been some changes since my last time really playing with nuclear craft. But next episode, we're going to do a little bit more AE2. I want to get item storage up in place and and kind of get this room sorted but item storage will be our major thing and we'll kind of like wrap up a lot of our AE2 work next episode and then the following episode will probably start nuclear craft which we can actually use our IC2 work we can actually use that to get kind of a boost in nuclear craft too so we'll get into that uh, once we start that but but I'd like to get rid of all these like random RTGs that are placed around and all that mess so um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.